Hey, what's going on? So recently I did a video on attachment style and specifically the four attachment styles that are connected with the attachment theory. And as I did, a number of people had comments and I got emails and questions on whether or not well, I think this might be me, I don't know, I'm not sure. So what I wanna do in this video is specifically talk about the anxious attachment style. I wanna give you five signs that might be an indicator you have anxious attachment style and a couple things to consider or do if that is you so that it does not continue to sabotage your relationships. That's today on Relationships. Hey, welcome to Relation Shots. My name's Eric Wooten. If this is your first time hanging out with us, welcome to the place to get practical relationship advice that actually works in your relationship. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming videos. If you want a free guide to intimacy, there's a link in the description area below. If you want a free guide to developing a relationship rhythm for your marriage, you can check that out below as well. If you're dating and you're looking for some resources, I've got the Modern Daters Manifesto, a free PDF for you. You can click on free resources in the description area below as well. So let's talk a little bit about anxious attachment style. So this comes along with the attachment theory and basically attachment style is just simply the expectations that people have when it comes to relationships with others based on their relationship with their primary caregiver in childhood. That's really where it comes from. So uh, whether you did or did not get certain interactions in childhood, because of that, you develop an attachment style that you carry with you into adulthood. And unless that attachment style is what they call secure attachment style, so any of the other three are gonna negatively impact your relationships as an adult if you don't recognize it and you don't deal with it. And so let me, first let's, let me ask you some evaluation questions. Do you often feel insecure in your relationships? Here's another one. Do you often need reassurance from the other person in a relationship? Do you often believe that maybe the other person you're in a relationship with doesn't like you, doesn't love you, isn't into you as much as you are into them. If you answered yes on those, it is likely that you have an anxious attachment style because that style is rooted in a fear of abandonment and in a fear of the other person not caring for you or appreciating you uh, the way you feel like you need to be appreciated. And so that very well could be you, but let me give you five signs and then I'm gonna follow the five signs with a couple thoughts on what you can do about it. So sign number one, you may have an anxious attachment style is you feel insecure in relationships. And so what I mean by this is if you generally, kind of your set point in any relationship is a place of insecurity, that you're not quite sure uh, if this is gonna last and you're wondering about that, then it might be that you have an anxious attachment style. Now again, I'm not talking about if you have a legitimate reason to feel that way, right? If you're in a relationship with somebody uh, who makes you feel insecure, uh, who has been unfaithful, who has uh, gaps in their stories, who may not be honest all the time, then of course, legitimately, you are gonna feel insecure in the relationship. I'm talking about if the relationship is generally healthy, not a whole lot of mess going on, but you just have this feeling of insecurity in a relationship, you, you need reassurance, you're not always quite sure uh, if they're really in this to stay with you, then it probably is likely that you have an anxious attachment style. A second sign is, do you have a fear of abandonment? Are you always worried that the person may leave you and you need constant reassurance that they're not going anywhere and they wanna stay in the relationship? And again, I'm not talking about if you have a legitimate reason to believe that. I'm talking about if there's no real signs or indicators that you should have a fear of abandonment, but you're always worried that they might leave you and out of that you're performing to hopefully keep them and you're afraid of doing anything wrong because if you do something wrong, then they might leave you. Now it's a whole different story if you're in a relationship with a partner who threatens a relationship just as a control power manipulation move. Uh, if they withdraw from you and give you the silent treatment or if they legitimately physically leave when they get pissed and that's kind of their MO to leave, that's a whole different story. You are gonna be insecure and have a fear of abandonment. But what I'm talking about is in a healthy situation, 
all things being pretty good in the relationship, but you always have this nagging fear that the person is probably going to leave you, they're going to abandon you, you have this fear of rejection, that's probably a good indicator uh, that you have an anxious adjust attachment style. Number three sign that you may have an anxious attachment style is emotional neediness. Now hear me out on this. This just means that if, if you constantly need to be reassured, if you constantly need to be told that you're enough and that they care about you and they love you and they're so lucky to be with you and, and you just get to a place of being, I would say even clingy in the relationship, that might be a sign. Now, I probably should be asking your friends how they would describe you because if I'm asking you, you're like, no, no, that's not me. I just love hard. I mean, I'm just committed. I mean, when I'm in something, I'm all in. <laughs> okay. There, there is a, there's a fine line between the reality of every relationship has some level of emotional neediness, right? We, we need emotional things from one another. Emotional connection in relationship is key. So we do have emotional needs with one another, but it can cross a line and run down a path quickly to codependency, to neediness, to cleanliness, if you always are needing this emotional reassurance in the relationship, that might just be an indicator that you have an attached, anxious attachment style. Number four is harsh reaction to criticism. So when you get negative feedback, constructive feedback, criticism, when a partner brings an issue to you, is your reaction a little bit over the top? Like, like feels fatal, like you're always defensive, you can't, you can't receive it, you have to explain to the other person why what they said is not actually the case and maybe they might be wrong in this instance and what they said that you did, you weren't trying to do and you just consistently have an overreaction to criticism, that might be an indication of an anxious attachment style. Now listen, here the reality is part of relationship is our ability to give feedback, to hold accountable, uh, to bring up when there's an issue in the relationship, that's part of it. That's a healthy relationship is going to have feedback, criticism, at times constructive uh, ways to try to help you grow a little bit. And so if nobody can make a suggestion to you without you getting super defensive and overreacting in the relationship, uh, it's probably because there's an anxious attachment style. And number five would just be a feeling of unworthiness. Now, if you just naturally feel unworthy to be in relationship with somebody else, it's probably due to an anxious attachment style. And again, I'm not saying if they beat you down all the time, they tell you you're terrible and you're lucky to be with them and you're not worth and nobody else will want to be with you. If you're with a partner like that, they're just not safe. You should not be in a relationship with them. But I'm saying if the relationship is decent and yet you just feel unworthy, what it's going to tend to make you do is you're going to give too much you're going to require too little because again, you think I, I'm just lucky to be in the relationship. I really don't deserve the relationship. If the other person leaves you, you're going to convince yourself that, well, that makes sense because I was just lucky that they were staying in the first place. So if you just have an underlying feeling of unworthiness in your romantic relationships, it's probably due to an anxious attachment style, uh, unless the person is trying actively to do things to make you feel that way. So there's five signs that might be an indicator uh, that you have an anxious attachment style. If one, two, three, or maybe all five of those fit for you, um, then what do you do? So that's the question, right? Okay, great. I, I diagnosed myself with an anxious attachment style, so now I'm doomed to always have terrible relationships. No. <laughs> if you have discovered that is how you are, and you've also discovered that that is causing problems, sometimes sabotaging relationships, making relationships difficult, because some of those are self-fulfilling prophecies. We believe this to be the case, and we act in such a way that we end up pushing the other person away and see, I knew I wasn't unworthy because they didn't want to be with me anyway, and I knew I should have never trusted them. Sometimes we can actually push people away because of our anxious attachment style, and then it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy, man. They, they probably wanted to stay, but you pushed them away because of how you deal with it. So if that's you, let me just give you a couple things you can consider. Number one is work on yourself. Listen, the healthier we are, the healthier we will be in a relationship. So if you in and of yourself 
have feelings of unworthiness, are insecure, feel like people are going to leave you or abandon you, you need to do some deep self-work. Why is that? You need to find value and worth in yourself without a relationship. Maybe in some of the stuff you do, maybe you get yourself in community with other people who speak of your worthiness, who speak of your value so that you come to believe that you do have value, that people will be lucky to be in a relationship with you, that you actually bring great things to a relationship, but you've got to feel good about that all by yourself. Not Listen, if we get in a place where we only feel that when another person in relationship makes us feel that, that also means that person can make us feel the opposite. So we've got to feel that internally. You got to do the work on yourself. And then number two, I would say, while you're doing the work on yourself, determine and set healthy relationship boundaries for you before you're in a relationship. That way, when you step into a relationship, you will already have determined what kind of people are safe and what kind of people are unsafe based on your boundaries. Unsafe people will push over those boundaries. They won't respect those boundaries. They won't respect your no. They will try to control and manipulate you. Safe people will respect your healthy relationship boundaries. So it will help you to have a safe and secure relationship rather than letting say so you, you do all the hard work to get healthy, to get whole, to find value and worth in yourself, and then you put yourself in a relationship with somebody who's toxic and unhealthy, and they will tear that thing apart and make you go back to the drawing board and get healthy again. So when you get healthy, part of getting healthy is now learn and understand what healthy relationship boundaries are. Have those established so when you step back into relationship again, you're not operating out of this anxious style where you're fearful and, and you wonder and you're insecure. You're coming in in a healthier spot with healthy boundaries where you're not gonna allow the other person's behavior to now cause you to begin to wonder again about some of the things that you have grown and healed and done the self work in. So that's just a couple of thoughts. So five signs you might have an anxious attachment style and a couple of thoughts on what to do if that is the case. So I'd love to hear you drop a comment in the comment section below and let me know if any of those resonated with you. Um, and also maybe if you've been doing the hard work and you've noticed, hey, I used to have that style, uh, but now I'm getting healthier and moving into the ability uh, to be secure in a relationship. Would love to hear how that's working out for you as well. If we can do anything for you in your relationship, check out our dating classes, check out our marriage classes, our marriage membership. Uh, we'd love to walk with you in this relationship journey. And until next time, I'll see you right back here on Relationships.